hour number three on this Monday as we roll through the last week in April. And we're going up north to British Columbia. Yoshi Shimatsu is on the road, and he is busier than ever. He will not be with us tonight. He'll be back next week. But standing in, our other colleague, the amazing Dana Durnford. How are you doing, Dana? Thank you, Jeff. Um, I don't do a four-hour show like you, so I'm actually pretty good. I consider myself lucky. <laughs> It can't be easy to do a four-hour show. Oh, it's three. It, it three. seems like I'm four, sorry. but... Uh, yeah, do I know? <laughs> it's uh, eight days a week, though. Um, <laughs> anyway, listen, we have... Uh, Not even funny, I guess. More, well, the, you know... And that was all things... I don't know. As human beings, we have this strange ability to laugh when we shouldn't. And I guess it's one way that our, our subconscious or psyche tries to deal with black... Issues, horrible issues, de- issues of death, planetary devastation, uh, Fukushima, which is never going to go away. Hundreds and hundreds of years from now, it'll still be doing the same thing until and unless we either get off-planet help and learn how to uh, mutate these radioactive nuclides into things that aren't harmful, or we figure it out ourselves. But in the meantime... We've got nothing to look forward to but cancer. How about that cemetery east of Hanford, Washington? That is, they say, quote, full of babies born with no brains in their cranium. Full right. of babies with no brains. Just uh, yeah. Hanford. Yeah. Which is the, uh, it would be bankrupt the country to clean up Hanford. Oh, absolutely. The, I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't know that they even can. But you're right. It's yeah, no, good point. It's spewing into the Columbia River, uh, just like Indian Point is spewing into the Hudson River. We we are. Yeah. yeah when do, when are we going to learn? I mean, honest to God, I don't. I, I, that's not a rhetorical question. That's a, when are we going to learn? We're not because we're in the hands of people who don't give a good goddamn about any of us. Human life means nothing to them when it comes to a profit and loss statement. It means nothing. All going to blow back in their face, though. Well, not not soon <laughs> enough. Not soon enough. The death of the Pacific is going to be hell to pay for a lot of people. Yeah. And just like they realize what they got done, and they refuse to believe it, or they're too, so busy. Oh, I think they know exactly what happened, Dana, and they just yeah. will not deal with it. They don't want to. They look the other way. The Pacific Ocean, I never, I never really did this kind of research, but you, you know, produced... Oh, my God, how many millions upon millions of tons of food every year for people? Three billion people, depending upon the Pacific. Is it's that how big a, of an ocean oh, it is, too. Wow, you know? wow. Yeah, no. depending upon that ocean for food. But it's also, like you say, all of the countries, all the radiation, the cancer that's already prevalent and, and manifesting and showing up. Yeah. Chernobyl is sent in a million people. Fukushima, the numbers are really weird. It's hard to say definitively i've seen numbers as high as a couple hundred thousand for those of you but i've seen a lot of, like a ton of media saying it's like twenty thousand tops went through there or something uh and that doesn't add up of course chernobyl was nothing compared to fukushima it's just one third the size 30 percent meltdown and stopped right, after right. 10 days so fukushima did not have any of those attributes fukushima was a full meltdown plus mixed oxide very dangerous incredibly unbelievable and unimaginably Hundreds of different nuclides, not just the cesium twins and a few others. People just don't understand. Hundreds. Right, there's the tracers. Uh, and pe- when people hear tracers, they don't understand. That's just uh, emblematic of all the other isotopes being there the yeah. whole time. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I see you want to do the show a bit earlier tonight. I didn't get that. I was No, no, we're fine. we're fine. I'm still covered in rags from working all day. What are you doing all day? Well, I want to do a run up the coastline this weekend coming, so we're uh-huh. doing getting the boat ready, and they're going to go cover four or five hundred miles of the coastline salt water. Uh, we got perfect weather the first time in about five months. First time we can actually the go same through. boat, yeah, and just going to run up and do a bird count and check uh-huh. a couple of low tides. Do so an insect. Keep your mouth sure. open when you're going up. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> see if you catch any insects. Uh, yeah, that's a scarcity, uh, insects, absolutely. We're not expecting, like you see, at the end of last year, folks are not familiar, I laid chicken I was just uh, legs on the ground outdoors. No birds stole it and no insects ate it. 
You're That's kidding amazing, me. You know? were, there, were there any ants? Six weeks. For six weeks sitting out there. There's three of them. No, no ants? ants? No ants. No uh, insects. No wasps. Are you wasp, telling me the, no ants, the ants are gone too? And, and now the microscopic world must be gone too. Um, that's what we see in Florida or Chernobyl, was the trees didn't rot because the insects were missing. And so they didn't have wicked forest fires because you got all this stuff sitting around. It didn't wow. Get, it didn't wow. biodecay naturally, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Here's another one for you, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Three billion people, as you heard Dana say, depend, depended on the Pacific Ocean for much, if not most, of their food, maybe all of it. And those people, where are they going to get their food now? They're going to have to import it to whatever the country they're, they're living in. Uh, here's something. March 17th, KION uh, television. This is about seals. We call them sea lions. Seals. All up and down the California coast. All up and down the Pacific coast. Sea lion moms and pups struggling to survive. And there's a photograph of them. Baynet, a volunteer group of naturalists, are keeping a watchful eye on them at the Hopkins Marine Station in Pacific Grove, just south of San Francisco. They say the start of the season has been rough. Some of them have been way too thin to have a healthy birth and have enough milk to feed their young, said Baynet volunteer, da-da-da-da-da. So far this season, 13 pups have been born, but none of them have survived. We're looking at a 100% mortality rate for baby seals in many areas of the Pacific Coast. They, the parents can't eat their skin and bones. They can't produce for the children. They're pups, and they die. And they're premature. Oh, yeah. They've never seen nothing like this. Some of the pups they've seen were the smallest that they've ever saw. Yeah. Like, say, uh, the, the mothers were, were uh, underweight and undernourished. And even emaciated, emaciated, uh, and the young ones were born premature, found on the beaches and that, that they found. Folks, why, why is your government withholding this information from you? Let me put it another way. Your government's lying to you. It's called the lie of omission. They don't report it. They leave it out. They hide it. They omit it. That's a lie. They're Mr. lying Job. to you for five years now. That's their job. You got it, they're, Dana. They're, corp- they're, they're uh, PR firms, your government and media included. They're PR firms. Everybody yeah. that got those positions, if you look at their uh, education and their yeah. training, it's all about being public relations firms. And they, they, they never, they're not trying to repair someone's reputation. They're not trying to help somebody that was unjustly, unfairly s- smeared or something. No, they're going to, to try to hide your causes of cancer and where it came from and how it's like, like you say, they're they're telling people to go ahead and eat the fish out of the Pacific, encouraging people to eat it. And I get that, that, you know, the fishermen are going to lose their livelihoods. You can't change that. But who wakes up one morning and says, you know, this is, this is a, uh, you can get a paycheck by going out and tricking everybody for just a bit longer. Most of them do. That's how they see it. And they don't have any issues with that. They'll do it for pharmaceuticals. They'll do it for uh, oil spills. They'll do it for accidents in the community. And they'll, their job is to come out and lie and make you the, the victim, uh, the, the aggressor. They turn the victims into the aggressor and then the aggressor into the victim. And they get a paycheck for doing that. That's what nuclear does. It comes out, it takes it. So, like, a cigarette got 7,000 chemicals in it. But mostly uh, the paper. <laughs> and that was over. Yeah, on top of that. Uh, uh, but there's 7,000 chemicals. But none of those chemicals and all of those chemicals combined are no nothing compared to a single atom from a chain reaction. See, that, that's on its own is shocking that there's nothing can touch these things. That's what makes, that's why we have terrorist laws and that's why we have nuclear holding sites. We don't have actual waste sites, but that's why we're fighting over Yucca Mountain is to try to find a spot to put this stuff because everybody recognizes the dangers of it unless it's released into your community and then disgusting puke machines, nuclear puke machines will come out and say it's like a banana or a potato chip. And that just confuses everybody. But after 70 years of it, people just switch off right away. I guess it's a mechanism they worked out along the way. Yeah, it's a denial mechanism. They just can't deal with it. They don't want to deal with it. 
The Chetcha River, the they evacuated. So that's right. The Chetcha yeah. River, over 7,000 communities permanently evacuated. Uh, for a lot less radiation than what we're getting here. But like you say, 220 million Beck, well, atomic decays atoms with isotopes in it in a liter of rainwater. We don't need a Geiger counter anymore after having these headlines, these numbers, these institution numbers from um, a 20 million Beck will avoid on 131 in a liter of rainwater just after Fukushima, Simon Fraser University. And the iodine 129 had a 50 million year half life for anybody who's not understanding that. But everything coming out of a chain reaction is created in that chain reaction from the uranium that they put in originally. Mm -hmm. So it's not like they added cesium or plutonium or anything else and then ionized and radiated that. The The chain, uh, everything comes from a chain reaction. It's man made. So by default, everything is deadly. And that's why we have the nuclear uh, terrorist laws and waste sites and everything else. And so that's what people are so confused about because the media is constantly, every day, article after article, about how it's no worse than getting on an airplane or getting a chest I, I can't. Or, see, I don't read I don't read that. I don't see that. But it, yeah. it is still being pushed on people. Constantly, yeah. Oh, man. Constantly. Well, I read 30 articles a day. Go ahead, Jeff. Gross negligence, uh, accessory uh, to murder, it's ultimately, yeah. of course. Yeah. Sickening. Now, look, let's look at what uh, nobody talks about anymore, and that's what British Petroleum did to the Gulf of Mexico. You can't eat anything in the Gulf of Mexico. It's full of genetic mal- t- malformations, mutations, uh, grotesque deformations, uh, open lesions. You don't eat stuff in the Gulf of Mexico. All that oil is still sitting there because of all the corrected. It's like a big mucus mass and it's down near the bottom. It's sitting there. And that's why they haven't allowed any hurricanes into the Gulf since the BP blowout. There's a reason for that. And, yes, they can steer hurricanes. Not only that, they, they're really good at it. And other countries are doing it. But uh, BP, that they uh, poured out 3 million gallons, they admit to uh, Corex. And this stuff is really bad stuff, folks. Uh, but they They're still spraying it, because... it, Dana. Still yep. spraying it. Yeah, on top of that. Here you go. Um, and so this is crazy that they've done that alone. That that's an, They have to dilute that. I can't remember what it is, five gallons to a, a point or I something. I forget. There are over yeah. 30 different volatile organic compounds. It's crazy stuff, yeah. Poison, death. They have to aggregate the oil and drop it down to the bottom for a little while. Yep. But that's the nursery along that whole area, right? That sustained all kinds of industries. Yep. So imagine we've lost the Gulf yeah. of Mexico. We've lost the Pacific Ocean. GMOs taken out the continents, a couple of continents. You got it. They, 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 they set that up. They've done the GMO for a couple of decades, then BP, and then uh, Fukushima. And Fukushima was controlled by BP. BP is owned by the Queen. I was just telling the-, the Queen has seventeen trillion dollars in uh, uranium stocks worldwide. <laughs> so it's some something else, you know. Yeah. She's got. That's why the stocks are so important. The stock market, and so that's another. Like you said, we talked about this before, and that's the issue with nuclear power plants uh, being on the stock exchange. Now mm-hmm. they're monsters. Now they're out of control. Mm-hmm. Even if the license expired on them, mm-hmm. on them, now they got human rights and they'll go bludgeon the regulatories. Not that you got to do that very hard and get their extensions. And these places are not supposed to have a life extendancy. Like you said, you can have 40, 50, 60 years of perfect and then have a meltdown. And you can't. Chernobyl mitigated the other 56 reactors in Ukraine and Russia, folks. That accident from Chernobyl still cost them a fortune every year, all year long. And it's not like they're like constantly reporting on Chernobyl. Over no, the they're not at all. No, they're they're having know? to build a whole new sarcophagus over it. That's, that's not right. cheap either. Yeah. Yeah. And the last one wasn't, didn't really work. <laughs> it was just, they put a paper towel over it again. If people, uh, it, Dana, one thing about Chernobyl, people don't understand. Now, I've looked at maps, you've looked at maps of the radiation that covered most of Eastern and Central Europe. It went all over the place. It's still being found. Yeah. Yeah, like you say, Sweden, the fishery, freshwater industry was closed until two years ago, so 28 years, or longer than that, actually, I guess. Well, three-mile island anniversaries today. Yeah. And then Chernobyl, 
Um, they were going out with buses and jacking people off the street and making them run it on the roof for 15 or 20 seconds. And uh, they went through a million people at that 600,000 military conscripted, conscripted soldiers. They were, killed them? Well, they never necessarily. Well, they killed them long term, but uh, long they term. were sent in there. And they were sent up, like you say, up on the roof for 15 to 25 seconds. And then they went home, never went back to a nuclear power plant again. But a majority of them, of course, have vicious illnesses. There's 3 million children, according to Coffee Anna 2000 at United Nations on the uh-huh. podium, saying 3 million children in Belarus with permanent disabilities from Chernobyl. It's not counting Ukraine and Russia and Europe. Wow. But that's, that's significant. And then, of course, Belarus got uh, all kinds of orphanages of deformed children. Not real, just horrible stuff. It's it ca- shut away. You never hear about it. Yeah, that's fact. You look up Chernobyl Hurt, folks. A documentary, an Irish uh, foundation went over there and produced this shocking footage. And this is real stuff where the official report said 28 people died. Uh, there were 600 helicopter pilots all died at Chernobyl. And Chernobyl, one third of the Was it that many, Dana? Yeah, 600. 600? That was Harvard on wow. March 16, 2011, talking about Fukushima. It was one of the first statements that he started off with. All the helicopter pilots at Chernobyl died of radiation illnesses shortly after. Uh, some of them fell right in on top of the reactor in the helicopter itself, become so disoriented. And so that's like in Japan, they sent in the helicopters, but they didn't even get a single pass over the reactor. They got fairly close. I saw it. I remember they had their water bucket and they were trying to drop water under the reactor. It was a that, joke. That, that should tell people how desperate that this was. At that it was time. blowing away. It did it nothing. Utter, it was just... Yeah, that was utter desperation. In uh, Chernobyl, what they done was uh, 600 helicopter pilots flew in boric acid and lead and uh-huh. dropped it down into the reactor. And that's probably why it stopped after 10 days. Yeah. So it was equal in those 10 days to 400 Hir- uh, Hiroshima bombs worth uh-huh. of radiation, 40 a day. And so this that one in Chernobyl was completely very significant, was insignificant in, in comparison, of course, to Japan, because Japan was a much different, much volatile fuel. It was uh, mixed oxide. It was reclaimed uranium, plutonium in most of the reactors. Mm-hmm. We don't know really a lot about Unit 5 and 6. We know there was 400 kilometers of the coastline where people were chopped up like wood chippers from the tsunami that went up to 10 kilometers inshore at 600 miles an hour. Mm-hmm. And that, when it hit the coastline, slowed down to like 120 miles an hour. But um, the whole coastline for that area had 15 reactors in it. And we know a, a prefecture uh, uh, mayor, I can't remember which prefecture in, in, in particular, but the headline is there anyway where he said TEPCO should tear down all 10 of the reactors, the damaged reactors. In that area. Yeah, so sure. that would have been, like the Donnie was only 10 miles away. And Fukushima Prefecture, I can't remember how many houses were swept away there, but that coastline, there was a million houses swept away in 400 kilometers. And so wherever the power plants were, they didn't get power within 11 hours. Uh-huh. And when your neighbors all gone through a wood chipper and you're gone through a wood chipper, and then people, you know, there's people dying. They never got into parts of that cities for uh, to find out there were survivors for seven, eight, nine days. They never went in and recovered bodies for up to three months uh, because of so much radiation. And there's places outside of Fukushima and there are other power plants that were too radiated to clean up, to decontam- try to decontaminate, you know, where they went in and cleaned up some topsoil and stuff. That were so highly radiated. I was just reading that before we went live. They couldn't get in there. And so that's another one i got to follow up on. But 15 reactors, looks like 10 of them for sure melted down. Now, along the coastline, Jeff, was common spent fuel pools. Along the coastline was waste uh, holding sites. Uh-huh. So, like, if you look at America, there's waste holding sites everywhere throughout America. Just yes, there hundreds are. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. It yeah. was the same thing in the, uh, along the coastline in Japan. So everything north of Japan was highly contaminated. Everything is rotten. Everything is destroyed when it comes to radiation. The government is just living in fantasy. And the people are living in denial. They really truly are. And, you know, they they, they ended the war in Russia, in Syria. I'm just going to switch gears for one yeah. second, Jeff. They ended the war in Syria, what is it, 7 million refugees to get 10,000 bad guys. Mm-hmm. So they ended the war there, and then they had the bombings in Brussels. And then they blamed it that the terrorists were going to attack the nuclear power plants. But yeah, they're telling you all the time in the media is like a banana potato chip walk and sunshine. Now they're worried about terrorists attacking a power plant. But it looks like the end of this, when the war ended, like Syria started a couple of days after Fukushima happened. 
was just a couple of days later, uh, on the 15th, I think, and the uh, accident was on 11. So it was pretty, pretty convenient for them to have that war and have those headlines and have these atrocities of 7 million refugees. That was used to hide Fukushima for the most part amongst everything else, all the mm-hmm. other yeah, 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 yeah. But it looks like Brussels was to pick up where Syria left off. So they're going to switch from war and go into police state full mode. And so that, as you know, if you covered it on your webpage, there are all kinds of articles on how to turn that into a police state and use it for justification to take away people's freedoms. Full and fascism, oh, they're saying. Yeah. Full oh, fascism, yeah. This, yeah. Uh, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, no, you go ahead, Jim. No, I'm just going to say that I had a guest on, Scott Portsline, uh, called me, and he, he hasn't been on in For years, and he's an, an a counterterrorism, anti-terror, nuclear power plant consultant. He's brilliant. He knows all about Three Mile Island. He's been doing this for 34 years. And he was on the program, what was it? Uh, let's see if I can find it here. It's in the archives. He was on Thursday, the first hour. And if that nuclear power plant had been, uh, first of all, they were all set to hit that nuclear plant in Belgium. One of their ISIS terrorists was arrested. And the uh, leadership of that group said, uh-oh, they've got uh, Abdul, and what if Abdul speaks? We're all going to get caught. We won't be able to make the attack successful. So that's why they went for the airport and the other location. They pulled off the nuclear plant. They were, that was their first choice. First choice. If they, we've never had a terrorist attack on a nuclear power plant or a terrorist with dirty bomb. It's coming. But if we did, I'm sorry to didn't cut you off. We've no, it's, a break coming up. It's coming. Sooner if, or we later. Did, if we did have a terrorist attack, that changes the equation worldwide. All of a sudden, the life we live doesn't exist anymore. No. And and no, but I mean, we already had that happen to us with Fukushima, with millions and millions and millions. And of nobody pounds. talks about it. My yeah. God, you know, any of these terrorists, all they have to do is load up some C4 in a rented Cessna and fly it into any nuclear power plant control complex, control center that they want, and they get a meltdown. Take out the Transformers is all over. Oh, that, that too. It's too, <laughs> it's too damned easy. It's, it's too scary. easy. And we hear banging on my door now in a few minutes for the rest of the month. Well, not one. probably. God, I hope not. All right, hold on. <laughs> Dane and I will be right back. Get right back to Dana and all of you really great people. We really appreciate you paying attention. A lot of people don't want to even hear about this anymore. You folks who are listening, you've got to carry the torch. Let me remind you also, there was a commercial during that hour break, if you heard it, and I hope you paid attention. Bio Superfood, it's not a joke, it's not a hustle. That was perfected and saved hundreds of thousands of people from early death, cancer, and all kinds of things after the Chernobyl disaster. I have taken it every year. That's not a joke. For uh, almost four years now, it's the four most potent algaes on the planet. It is an incredible anti-radiation property. And that combination is remarkable. Read it. Look at the page. I urge you to get it. They're small capsules. Just take them every day. They will boost your immune system and your energy level and give you total nutrition in addition to helping ward off the effects of radiation. Okay, enough of that. Now, let's get back to uh, our conversation with Dana Durnford. This is uh, not going away. Keep that in mind. And the more you listen, the less you hear. The government is lying. They will not tell you. They won't say a word. I had another story. Tuna. Ninety. What is it? 95% of the, the big tuna are gone now. They're dead. About that or something, yeah. Yeah, and so they're protected. And tuna poachers go out there and catch them for the uh, rich Japanese sushi eaters. They love it. So they're going to have their, their sushi and lots of little uh, Geiger counter clicks along with it. They'll never hear it, but uh, in time they'll pay the price. So the ocean is, is really, it's, it's just gone, folks. And I get occasional emails from me, what do you mean? They're reporting the best year in fishing in, well, whatever, two decades at such yeah, and such location. I mean, we got the headlines showing nothing but devastation. Everything's starving to death, everything emaciated, so, everything yeah. missing, the failure of the industry. It's all there. 
I get those emails too all the time. Yeah, I, they're just people in denial, and, and they want to believe, but it's sad. It, this story, if you look for it, at the top, right above headlines, you'll find the latest, uh, best I can put them together and collate them, uh, Fukushima stories. Just If you don't do anything else, just read the headlines. Here, listen. Another Japan reactor permanently shut down. Well, at least they're doing something. What about Indian Point over here? That thing should have been shut down 15, 20 years ago. 40-year reactor life rule. That's the usual lifespan of a productive reactor. 40 years. The 40-year reactor life rule must prevail over profitability. That's common sense. Now, they're given, well, I think it might be Indian Point is in its 58th year. One of these reactors is so old, it ought to be on Social Security. Uh, the Florida Crystal River nuclear power plant is spewing radiation into Miami Bay. Uh, Fukushima, 10 million tons of radioactive waste is about to be, well, I guess they're a year or two away from uh, beginning to deal with that. 10 million tons. Uh, interim, just, just doing it at an incinerator plant. <laughs> yeah, they're going to they're going to burn it. Uh, That's what they're going to do. Yeah, and right. it's it's not going to be stored. They're going to burn it, and it's got a lot of it's going to come over here. Make no mistake about it. See, fire doesn't bother radioactivity, or radionuclides at all. It just floats on up and goes wherever the winds take it. Uh, interim radioactive soil storage. Uh, not until 2020. They're talking about some of this radiation being put in uh, the ground. It's radioactive soil. But they're not going to start doing that for another four years. Crazy. Tuna poachers reap big profits. 100% baby seal death rate on California coast. Cemetery full of dead babies with no brains near Hanford, Washington. Burning radioactive waste begins at Fukushima. There's another bright idea. Ah, and here's the... uh, Here's the clincher. Fukushima winery, Dana, is ready to ship its first vintage. The first year of production since five years ago. Can you imagine? (laughs) No. Talk about sparkling wine. They need to abandon Fukushima. They need to abandon it, and they need to turn it into a nuclear repository. And But, I mean, that's it. They need to abandon Japan. Everybody needs to move to Chernobyl somewhere a lot safer there than it is in Fukushima or Japan. Well, and Tokyo was, should have been evap- evac- to- ev- Tokyo, yeah. And their drinking water is guaranteed, confirmed, highly radiated, and always will be. The mountains are always releasing it. The trees yeah. are always releasing it, and all the wind, and all the rain, and all the storms. It gets carried up there, hits the mountain, releases the load, and washes back down to the coastline, to the estuaries and rivers and lakes and rivers. And it'll continue to do that. It's, it's constantly coming out of that reactor. Like, uh, the models that uh, we see out there from different institutions around this planet the model the, the releases for just a couple of days based upon a single reactor and based upon venting, not based upon detonations or meltdowns. But those models show uh, the entire northern hemisphere completely covered in radioactive fallout permanently. Uh, and it never stopped coming out of there. So every day what's coming out of there right now, even though the biggest lot came out originally, and we all kind of get that, but when the meltdown happened... It's not like we had an explosion and most of it has gone, a little bit's burning off and will continue to burn off. The chain reaction is liquid uranium. It's a liquid core. And so it's consuming everything around it all the time besides the vapors. It's like the sun. You have to think of it that way for people that are not familiar with it. And if you drop or anything falls on top of it or anything around it, it gets melted at six, seven, eight, nine thousand degree Fahrenheit temperatures. And I'm always in aerosol and listen to the environment. Mm-hmm. It's cyan noise. It's no different than something. It is different. But it is deadly. And so, like the stuff in the chain reaction, the fissionable products, these things are maniacal. Mostly it's producing curium. Once again, the cesium and the iodines are tracers. The tracers are there, curium is there. And curium acts like plutonium, which is man-made for anybody who's not familiar with it. And it's very, very deadly, very, very long life to it. And then there's also his, uh, one of his daughters is americium, and that... This is how curium, we know this stuff been studied heavily on dogs and animals, and it kills them all, every one of them. And they've never cured an animal that they were killing with this stuff, and they've 
You know, just, uh, we talked about it before. Huge numbers of animals, beagle dogs and beagle puppies is one I talk about all the time. 94 studies and not one of them on trying to cure the animal. Not a single one. All of them on how the radiation killed them. They all died within five years, every study for 35 years. and But it's really interesting when you huh. think about it that way, how the industry never did try to come up with a cure. Right? It, it just tried to figure out how it killed them and then how they well, can figure out how not to pay that out. Insurance well, what's, that, what's that tell us? There is no cure. Right. And that you can get a little bit out of your body and that you can help yourself by taking uh, highly nutrient uh, food, you know, natural food. Mm-hmm. And staying away from the GMOs because they stop you from uptaking minerals. And it's just a glass of and formaldehydes in the GMO. It's in the DNA. It stops you from uptaking. Uh, gly- glyphosate is one of the most deadly things on the planet. Ultimately. It is so. Yeah, it's recognized as carcinogenic in tiny quantities. Absolutely. You have to get it engineered into the food. Canada is now going to go GMO potatoes. Goodbye. 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 Yeah. And, but, I mean, suicide. It's yeah, already suicide got wish. 95% of the supermarkets is GMO. Is it that but, high? Yeah, why they got to do this to us? You know? I don't even go into supermarkets. It's scary. Yeah. They're the most frightening places, especially like stuff like craft, row after row oh, after row them. after row. Yeah. Shocking, and that's all GMO. Philip Morris used to, uh, who owns the tobacco company, bought it, and uh, they're strictly GMO. They got some product there allegedly, but no one can believe them. No one can trust them, and they hid it away, and they spent a stupid amount of money on lobbyists to keep it hid away. Mm-hmm. But yet they're the biggest purveyors. And what people got to do now is they got to realize that Japan is not a game. This is not a joke. This is not something that we say, oh, well, we really screwed up. We really messed up. Excuse the language. This is something where it just gets worse. And it can produce storms, imagine, unimaginably strong storms. It already has in Fiji over 200 miles an hour sustained winds. Yeah. I've never seen that. In, yeah. Uh, Yoshi Kong. explained that, uh, how the. The whole Fukushima catastrophe has screwed the weather up even more. Right. And so, like, the one that hit the Philippines, that turned 30 million uh, coconut trees into projectiles, or pineapple trees into projectiles. 30 million. It, it ripped apart 42 provinces. It, the wow. eye of it was over 100 miles wide. Wow. But the storm yeah. damage was 300 miles wide. This was a tornado. What's the tornado is only uh, normally a quarter mile wide. That would be a big one and lasting a minute or two. How wide was this one? This one was 100 mile wide with 200 plus mile per hour wind sustained <laughs> up to 225 on land and never lost any speed went on over it into Vietnam. Mm-hmm. So this was amazing. We had the same thing happen in Tonga last year, and now we had the same thing happen in Fiji. Now, interesting thing about all of this was a couple of days back, two days ago, Philippines launched a satellite, just a little small thing, $17 million, but it's to look for uh, adverse weather conditions. Because I watched interviews after this thing hit the Philippines, and people say, look, if we're going to have storms like that in the future anymore, what's the sense of rebuilding? There's nothing we can build can sustain that. We've never seen that before in our history. And we've never either. We've only seen in mountain passes where certain adverse conditions right. where you get a 200-mile-an-hour gust right. and knock over transport truck. We've never seen it at 100-mile-an-hour void. And now that typhoon swept. There was two of them converged at Japan. Swept uh-huh. over Japan and went over uh-huh. to the Philippines. So all that warm water around Japan from the isotopes constantly radiating the ocean. Oh, it's just feeding these storms, just pumping moisture up there. And then it's leaching out into the environment itself as the storm is coming by. It's sucking it up through the entire country. Every time it rains, I mean, they're burning it in the incinerators, recontaminating the country over and over and over. And then that how by can, proxy comes to North America. Go ahead, how, Jeff. Can, how can it be that the world has allowed the Japanese to use municipal incineration to get rid of radioactivity. It over doesn't get rid of anything. It comes over here. It liberates it, yeah. Absolutely. You can put it in battery acid, folks. You can't kill it. So Jeff is... This is uh, beyond belief. It really is beyond belief. That's what it is. The Japanese should emergency. have been prohibited from burning any of that crap. They should have forced to find a, a landfill somewhere... Lined it, done whatever it takes, and put it in there. I don't care. Yeah, just... exactly. Why couldn't they do that? Why couldn't they take some valley and then bring all the stuff to you? Well, they got over 30 million one-ton bags that are only meant to last a year for starters. And they, they there's no incentive to do that. But the bags it's are not... still sitting there. They're beginning to fall apart, I understand. Yeah, they will, yeah well, that year's long gone. Right. And so uh, this wasn't even a thought-out plan. This was just 
Like, let's look busy. Let's pick up a wheelbarrow and keep moving it was, around all it day was. long so we get a paycheck at the end of the week. Making work. Making work. And Just you can't... Doing nothing. It does, you know, you can't... Uh, a lot of this stuff is highly radioactive material. And this was all over uh, Fukushima Prefecture. But I was doing a stream the other day where I was showing Osaka, Japan. And the sewage system all around Osaka is highly polluted. They can't use it for fertilizer because it's too much radiation. So that should tell people what it's really, truly like. If people want to see what it's like, they need to look at the sewages of the communities. That would tell you huge numbers, huge. And the same thing with your drinking water. Uh, and I know there were people a couple of years ago doing that, reporting on that, and then they got in all kinds of mischief, trouble for it, rather. Because they don't, and I mean. Well, look, there's a war, I, as I, as, excuse me, but I said, uh, my first hour tonight was about Pete Santilli, who's in prison right now, jail. Yeah. He's jailed. Uh, this is, this is, a, there's a worldwide war on independent journalism. It's part of the New World Order globalist elite plan to quash any dissent or any information. They're after total, abject, absolute control through the media. They've got the U.S. media control. They've got the Canadian media controlled. Uh, and now they're going after uh, independent alternative news sources. You watch. It's it's coming. It's what they're doing. That's what Paul Pot done. He killed people who were in glasses because they looked smart. And he got rid of, of artists and poets. Oh, yeah. Right? Uh, Erdogan, or Erdogan, and that was however things- you want to pronounce it, is yep. getting close to that same kind of lunacy. He is now jailing, ordering the courts to jail reporters who simply disagree. Five years, common. Five years for disagreeing or, or tweeting something that... Uh, right, yeah. It's insanity. Mis- it was a misinterpretation, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. The media corrected it, but they still got them in the court. Correct. Yeah, and uh, it's just this vicious thing, machine out there, because it was never meant to do the job. Look what they're doing to you, those. Dana. Come on. It's yeah. the same oh, thing. Yeah. You're an independent Ooh. journalist. You are a reporter. You have. Shut you should me. have freedom of the press and protection therein. They are after Dana. They're going to try and make his life miserable. Uh, they already have. It's about um, liquidating your assets or costing you a fortune or just breaking you, tying you up with so much. Uh, misery and it is misery people don't understand that never been through it it's misery and it's not gone away for a long time for me yet and it'll you can't go to sleep and have it go away it's with you when yeah. you wake up you, you... oh it is yeah no it's uh taken over my life destroyed my life in many aspects of it certainly bankrupted us and then that put everything i was doing on hold and then we had to rebuild everything i mean they've killed over nine computers in less than a year and a half ten computers already in less than a year and a half. Well, they throw in a, 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 a cyber bomb and, and actually wreck them? They wrecked them, yeah. Oh, yeah, wrecked them. I've sent some of them back to the factory and it couldn't be repaired. So uh, that's unusual, see? But then again, you know, look what I'm doing. And that's such a touchy subject. And they want everybody to think it's like a banana and a potato chip. And I just keep banging away at that every chance I get kicked. Weren't away you, weren't you uh, forbidden from being able to use that expression? <laughs> Right. In court, I'm not allowed to use it. Apparently, the science is settled that a, a nuclear fuel rods are like a banana and potato chip are walking in the sunshine, which were my exact words I use in a lot of my videos. Yeah. And yeah. that was the words they used in court, which is funny, really, because I don't need that to beat the daylights out of these people. I got hundreds of ways to beat these people up in the courtroom. Like in a fear fight, but I didn't get a fear fight. We got a judge who has now claimed that a banana is a dirty bomb. So he's setting the stage for Unbelievable. Everybody. Well, that's what he done, though. That's, that's or she done. That, that's his, they're setting a precedent, and that can never be allowed to happen. Because, I mean, this is... Anyway, I'm not going to try to go down the road with everybody, because it's too complicated. But generally, folks, I spent 260 days uh, documenting the coastline of British Columbia, 15,000 miles off the coastline, by Zodiac, a little dinky, and up to five months without coming home. And I come home, and I was uploading the rest of the documentation from the last expedition showing the extinction event playing out on the coastline of British Columbia, right. and I got arrested. That's for anybody that's not familiar, and I'm just singing the song for everybody. No. And then I got arrested and vilified in the media, char- and the media claimed I was charged with death threats, and that's not true. I was charged with criminal harassment, which is like a stalking law, which is not what I was doing. I was on the ocean for 260 days. But these people tried to get me arrested twice in 2014. These were stalking me. These were on a fishing expedition going to the police and trying to get me arrested 
because I said these were lawyers for saying it's like well, a banana or a potato chip. That's what the whole fight was about, and that's why the judge banned me for being able to use that as as a motive. And then uh, the video where I said it, I'm not allowed to use the video for context, just the eight-second clip of what I said. Oh, I mean, man. that's kangaroo court, right? For sure and So is. they're, they're going to throw it out or something. But meanwhile, they'll bankrupt you back and forth. You know, 12 hotels, 12 ferries, 3,000 kilometers of driving, and uh, just all that time away they from home. They got nothing else to do. Different they got no yeah. real crime because mostly the government's behind yeah. much of the crime. Yeah. They let me back online. That was a big mistake. <laughs> no, no. But they took down 300 of my presentations, one hour presentation. And that's, none of that defeats me, though. None of that slows me down. None of that stops me. None of that dissuades me. Or, I mean, you know, I did go through that initial shock. I'm not denying that that, that shook me for the first week, you know. But in that day, once I recovered, that was the end of the game for him. <laughs> I don't stay down for very long. Well, I've been washed up on the rocks and hurricanes, and that didn't stop me. So I'm not going to live with sure chicken mix. Grateful to be able to hear you laugh about this. It's, it is sometimes you got to, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's horrible. It's criminal. Gallows left. But yeah. yeah. Well, all I can say is that you supported us the whole time we were on the ocean radio interviews. That was the only time really people can get to hear from me. And so that was, the hounds appreciated that, I can assure Those you. Those were incredible programs. Yeah. Just incredible. They were incredible days, historical days. Yeah. It just seems surreal that we've done that. It just doesn't seem like we really truly done it, but it's done. We can document it. It's not like it. a ecologist. There is an extinction event. There is no doubt. The birds are gone. The insects are gone on top of that. The glaciers are gone from the mountains of British Columbia. That's permanent. That's not coming back for 1,000, 5,000 years. That's how long it took to form. And that regulated all the estuaries and lakes and streams and rivers and the coastal waters with temperature from all that cold water coming down. It's the a catastrophe in and of itself, Dana. It is, yeah, yeah. And we don't hear any climate scientists or global scientists or, or uh, Greenpeace or anybody else talking about it. Not a single person has mentioned uh, glacier ice missing from British Columbia Mountains. No media I've never seen it. it. Never seen it. Yeah, no, you won't see it either. Because that's, a, that's an amazing. It's not global amazing. warming. It's, it's man-made radiation, yeah. see? It's, it's an amazing can't, story. They All can't the blame glaciers it on are gone. Warming either. See, that's the, their problem. No, would. no, they would. They've been you, you saying, think oh, that they would? Yeah, 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 yeah. You think that they take it and run with it and try and pass it off yeah, as that? But they're yeah, not. They're, they're afraid really, to touch it. Just <laughs> confuse people anyway. Yeah, and that's their normal modus operandi. But not this time. They never touched it. Won't go near it. And in fact, uh, when I was doing two radio interviews with CBC about being arrested. Which is, why would they care about me being arrested for something like that? But anyway, here were two interviews and one day, 20-minute interviews. And when I got to that part about the mountains where I nail it, right, for 20 minutes straight on the first interview, and when I got to the mountains, I said, I'll bring it all together for you. All the glaciers are missing in British Columbia. That's because, and she hung up on me. That was CBC. She said, got to go, Dan, and she hung up. <laughs> wow. And they phoned me back two hours later and done another interview, but they didn't quote me and accused me of death threats once again. So it was an orchestrated attack. It was an orchestrated uh, media frenzy. Sure it yeah. yeah, it was so. And it was a feeding, a feeding frenzy. Uh, it was, it's, well, it was a, a almost a public sacrifice of a human being. Yeah, it was. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was a Molik. Uh, all he needed was an Allison render, and it was... <laughs> These are maniacal, twisted, and demented people that start are starting to understand. Oh, they are. Oh, the world's going to oh, wake are. up and be looking for blood. The world's going to wake up and be looking for vengeance. Not for solutions, unfortunately. That's no, just the society no, we live no. in. See? It's, it is true. Uh, the people just don't have the knowledge or the skills to understand what they're up against. So there are no solutions. Like and an in, in point of fact, there really aren't solutions anyway. Uh, what are they going to do with those four? How many thousand, uh, hundreds of tanks do they have now in that tank farm? Yeah, it's over a thousand. Uh, it's a thousand something. But and, there are x-rays and neutrons coming at it and military organs. I suspect they released it all. It's already gone. That's my take on it. I would, I would no back crisis. you on that as a guess. We use plastic hoses. Yep. Nothing's broken yep. apart. Yep. We haven't heard any emergencies. We haven't heard of any new crises. No, and the, so they dumped them. That's what happened. I think they're all, I think they're all empty or nearly empty. Yeah. I think oh, you're right. That's my take on it, Jeff. I agree with you. Wow. Okay, my friend, get some rest. Thank you, Dana, as always, for everything you've done for all of humankind. And it's Thank a lot. Thank you, my friend. Hugs for you and your loved ones. Hugs everybody. Thanks, man. Dana Dernford, uh, the nuclear proctologist.org, and uh, go check it out. Okay, 
That's Monday, tomorrow night, an historic radio program. Reverse speech reveals what really happened in the JFK assassination. David John Oates will be here. Dick Allgaier, the remote viewer who remote viewed it. Donald. And the premier, the one and only, JFK researcher, author, amazing all-around human being. Jim Mars will be here tomorrow night. 52 years he's been researching the JFK murder. Tomorrow night, don't miss it. See you then.